Hello everyone, welcome to Applications Manager's free training series. Let me first introduce myself. I'm Priya and I will be your trainer today. I'm a content writer and have been working with Manage Engine Applications Manager marketing team for over two years. In today's webinar, I'm going to talk to you about how you can evaluate and track the availability and performance of websites, optimize user experience via synthetic transaction monitoring, resolve front-end issues that impact users with real user monitoring, and how you can leverage web page analyzer to optimize web page performance. First, let us see how we can effectively evaluate and track the availability and performance of websites. According to an article published in BrowserStack.com, 47% of consumers expect a web page to load in two seconds or less. 40% of people abandon a website that take more than three seconds to load. A one second delay in page response can result in a 7% reduction in conversions. If your website is unavailable or has poor responsiveness, end users won't be able to engage with your website's pages or wouldn't want to wait for them to load, which can have a significant impact on your business's reputation. Therefore, to ensure the effectiveness of your site, avoid any performance hiccups and create seamless digital experiences for users, website performance monitoring is pivotal. Not only does it provide insight into your website's availability, but also gives you an understanding of critical metrics of your website so that you can work on improving its reliability and make it work optimally. The first step in digital experience is the interaction that the user has with the website. So when the user tries to access it, it needs to be available. Website downtime and slowness are major causes of concern for businesses. Frequent downtimes and slowness can make your site loot, lose credibility among loyal customers, as well as create a bad first impression on first time visitors. So what causes website downtime and slowness? Scheduled maintenance. A scheduled maintenance is a temporary period in which a site or an app is made offline or inaccessible for updates, backups, or maintenance purposes. Data center problems or internal server error. If there's a data center problem or a server error, the request from the user may not even reach the server. Bugs in website code. These bugs may cause errors and prevent the site from not loading or might even cause very slow loading. High traffic. If too many people are trying to access the website at the same time, it may not be able to handle the load. Hacking attempts. Hackers trying to pull any suspicious activities on your sites can cause it to go down or become slow. To tackle and prevent problems like this, you can use Applications Manager's URL Monitor. It basically helps you ensure 24 times website availability. It acts as a continuous URL monitoring service that keeps constant watch over a specific URL or a web page. It helps verify the availability of a specified addressable standard HTTP and HTTPS URL. You can get instant notifications whenever your website is down. You can recheck the website status to identify and eliminate any false positives. You can validate HTTP requests and track website response time along with split ups such as DNS time, connection time, first byte time, and last byte time. Everybody loves a fast website. With improvements in broadband speeds and advent of super fast websites, user expectations and website speed have changed. Response time of a website determines the speed of the website. Response time is how long it takes for your web server to connect and send data packets to the browser of an end user. A website without latency can leave a good impression on customers and can help lower bounce rates too. Applications Manager's URL Monitor 
tracks your website's response time along with split up such as DNS time, connection time, first byte time, and last byte time. First byte time is the time it takes for a browser to receive the first byte of response from a web server, meaning it's a very strong indication of how fast the website is performing for that user. It also helps you analyze and diagnose the root cause of all problems. This can help you to reduce MTTR. Now let us see how we can add a URL monitor in Applications Manager. So uh, you go to the new monitor menu and click on add new monitor. Under web server or services, click on HTTPS URLs. So you can specify the name of the monitor and the URL that you want to monitor. You can then specify the polling interval along with the timeout. For URLs that have form-based authentications, we have other options. So there are two options for the form submission method, post and get. Uh, both post and get methods are used to transfer data from a client to the server in the HTTP protocol. The main difference between post and get is that get carries the request parameter that is appended in the URL string, while post carries the request parameter in the message body, which makes it a more secure way of transferring data from a client to the server. So if you choose post, you will have to choose the payload type as well. And there are four types, form, text, XML, and JSON. You can also provide the request parameters if you have any. If the URL requires any authentication, you can specify the username and password. You can also choose to uh, select the credentials from a pre-existing list. Error if response code is. So this uh, field basically helps you and alerts you and gives you an error uh, when you provide a response code. For example, by default, you will receive a response code if the response received is greater than 200. If you want the monitor to be automatically rescheduled to run again when the error is detected, you can check this box. You can also specify user agents and custom headers. And here you can specify the header name along with the header value. If there's a SSL version, you can choose to enable it along with the version. And if the URL requires any client certificate, certificate authentication, you can check this box. And you can also upload the certificate. If the certificate requires any uh, credentials, you can specify the same here. The URL monitor also provides an option for content check, which means you can specify certain terms or words in the should contain box. And uh, during every poll, Applications Manager will check if the response contains this specific expression or not. If it's found, the monitor will be made unavailable. And in the should not contain field, if the particular term or expression is found, the monitor will be made unavailable. So you can choose to uh, associate this monitor with a monitor group, or you can just click on add URL monitor. So the monitor has been added. Let's check how it looks. So this is the overview page of the URL monitor. Here you have the details of the monitor and the availability. So you can view the availability by looking at it and it's visual. So at a single glance, you can see if your uh, URL is available or down. Then you have response time, the average response time along with current response time. And then you have the split up as well. Like I mentioned, there are uh, DNS time, connection time, first byte time, and last time, last byte time details. You also have page size details where it shows the current page size and percentage page size change and previous page size. So for all of these attributes, you will be able to configure alerts or alarms, which means when the value crosses a specified threshold, you will receive a notification. So you will know when something is not right. The next topic is optimize user experience via synthetic transaction monitoring. 
So, like I was saying earlier, in today's age of instant gratifications, end users expect to able to enjoy a seamless, issue-free experience on your website. Although monitoring the website availability and response time gives you a fair idea of whether your website is up and running or not, you can't know if your users are able to perform transactions without fail unless you understand the website's end user experience. This is where we need to use synthetic monitoring techniques. Applications Manager Synthetic Transaction Monitoring helps you analyze website performance from an end user perspective, which can help you identify issues that might otherwise go unnoticed. It can help you test the performance of critical user parts on your website, which means it can help you record complex workflows to keep an eye on important transactions that take place on your website. You can dynamically track the website's availability and performance from your end user's location. It can also help you ensure that website is, if, if your website is meeting your business objectives and service level agreements. So let's see how Applications Manager's real browser monitoring facilitates synthetic transaction monitoring. Applications Manager's synthetic transaction monitoring feature, also known as the real browser monitor, opens up an actual browser like Firefox from multiple geographical locations and tracks down how the elements in your websites load from that location, and more specifically, how your users view them. So uh, the Real Browser Monitor helps you simulate business critical transactions using Selenium-based scripting of tests. The first step involves the recorder in which you can record a critical transaction. Every action that you perform while recording, be it hovering, clicking on an element, all of it will be saved in a Selenium-based script file. Once the recording is done, Applications Manager then opens up a real browser in which it plays the recorded transaction again to identify if any error occurs. During the playback, data collection takes place and all the performance metrics are then published on the monitor dashboard. It also lets you take screenshots during the playback to catch any errors. You can test this from multiple locations which means you can identify this if there are any errors from enterprise branch offices or actual customer location. To facilitate monitoring in multiple locations, we make use of end user monitoring agents. So let's say you're hosting an event in your office and you've created a registration form for the same. All employees need to register for the event, which means employees from all your branch offices should be able to do so without any hassles. To test this critical workflow of filling the form and successfully registering for the event, you can use Applications Manager's Real Browser Monitoring. For that, you will first need to install EUM agents in all your branch offices. Then you can record the transaction of filling and registering from your main office. The same transaction will also be performed in all your branch offices using these EUM agents, which will then send the data back to Applications Manager. This way, you can check if this workflow functions without any errors in all the desired locations. Applications Manager's end user monitoring agents basically provide greater visibility into the user experience and help you detect potential performance problems with ease. The EUM agents can then be installed in multiple branch offices or in different cities or in the systems of your end users. All you need is a secure HTTPS connection between the agent and Applications Manager server. Now let's see how we can add a real browser monitor in Applications Manager. Like I mentioned, you'll need to install the web transaction recorder and EUM agent. So I've already done both. Now let's see how we can record a transaction. So the web transaction recorder looks like this. First, you'll need to specify the host name along with the SSL port number. And then it will ask for username and password. You'll have to specify the username and password of Applications Manager.
and then you can click on create real browser monitor. So here, in whichever URL you want to uh, record the transaction, you can enter it. So once you click on enter, you can see the recording has started. So you can perform the transaction. You can like click on elements and hover over elements. So once you've done recording the transaction, you can click on preview and save. You can then specify the name of the monitor and then specify the poll frequency. You can also specify the page load timeout. Like I said, this transaction will be played in an actual browser. Applications Manager supports three types of browsers, Firefox, Edge, and Chrome. Here I've chosen Firefox. If you want this transaction to be uh, tested in other locations where you've already installed your EUM agents, all of that will be listed here. So you can select whichever agent you want. Here, I've installed one agent in my machine, and it's shown here. So I'm clicking on that. You can choose to associate this monitor with a monitor group. And then there's accept untrusted certificates option. You can check this box if you want to test if the website certificate is untrusted or if it's not approved by a trusted certificate authority. Show performance metrics. You can check this box if you want additional metrics like page rendering time, download time, block time, etc., to be displayed. Show screen screenshots. You can check this box if you want the real browser monitor to capture screenshots of your transactions to provide better insights, especially during downtime. You can also choose to add a URL sequence monitor, but right now we are creating a real browser monitor, so I'm unchecking this box. Once you give all the details, you can click on next. Here, all the steps that you perform will be shown. And when, upon clicking on each step, you'll, you'll find the details as to what you did in each of these steps. So you can verify if you performed and recorded the transaction correctly. So just like the content check, you can choose to generate an alert if the following keywords are not present, which means an alert will be generated if the keyword specified in this box is not present. Similarly, for keywords are present. If you want, you can like specify these options as well. Once you're done, you can click on Create Real Browser Monitor, and you'll see a message that says Monitor added successfully. So now let's see how the monitor looks. So this is the overview page, and here uh, the list of EOM agents will be there, and you'll have an overview of the steps that you performed. When you click on the EOM agent, you'll get more details. Here you can see the average page load time, the transaction time, and the page load time of each of the steps that you performed. So for each of this, you can also uh, configure alarms. And then we have the screenshots of the transactions that you performed along with graphs that show you the resource size per percentage and the resource count percentage. Then we have the waterfall chart. Here, for each step, uh, we have resources that were involved, along with the status code that each of these resources uh, returned, its size, and the type of resource. So here we have split ups. So you, when you click on each of this, you can see uh, start time, redirection time. So from this, you'll know uh, which step is taking a long time. So you can even optimize it to create a better end user experience. So now let's talk about synthetic transaction monitoring use cases. Comparing your performance to your competition. With synthetic transaction monitoring, you can set up benchmark scenarios to see how your applications are performing over time. You can also benchmark your company's performance against top competitors within a certain historical time frame or within a specific geographical region. This approach will help you establish a strategic outlook and preserve competitive advantage in the marketplace. 
testing new features. Testing is an important and an early stage of application development. Synthetic monitoring provides a set of baselines and thresholds that will pinpoint any obstacles one is likely to face while using the application in real time. Measuring performance impact of third-party applications. Today's websites increasingly rely on third-party features such as cards, ads, customer reviews, etc. So to provide an outstanding uh, customer experience, all of this need to be working properly. If there's a single weak link in the chain, one or more of these elements are not working correctly, it can adversely impact your site. Synthetic transaction monitoring can greatly assist you in helping to monitor your third-party applications while also alerting you to potential or real performance per degradations and downtime. This helps tremendously in providing line of sight on your service level agreements in order to hold the third-party vendors accountable. Finding issues before customers. Synthetic monitoring helps you to set up baseline tests in order to measure the way your customers will interact with your websites. This type of testing can provide a direct feedback on performance degradation or availability issues. It will also help your team locate the root cause and engage the right experts to fix the issues before they impact the end users. We are now going to move on to our next topic, resolve front-end issues that impact users with real user monitoring. So what is real user monitoring? Real user monitoring refers to capturing the user's interactions with the website in real time. This helps you analyze how your end users perceive your website. As businesses go digital and global, their websites are accessed from various devices and from multiple geographies. It's important to provide a consistent user experience across all geographies and devices. But in reality, the user experience could be impacted by various external factors like network latency, operational hiccups, trouble retrieving requested resources, slow ISPs, etc. And what works in one browser may not work in another. This is where RUN comes in handy. It helps you see why your website is slow and identify if you've overlooked any issues with your page load time and find out where and why a user abandoned the page. All of this information enables you to optimize your website performance. To understand why real user monitoring is more essential, we must understand the drawbacks of synthetic transaction monitoring. It does not always rely, align with reality. Due to the fact that the nature of the traffic that we use for synthetic testing is not organic, it really isn't a true representative of real user experience at any given time. Its outcome and performance are rather predictable. Because synthetic transaction uses simulated actions, it does not predict the actions of the real life customers. Time consuming for incident resolution. When you receive complaints from end users in real time, synthetic monitoring data does not tell you about what the end user was actually doing or experiencing. You would basically have to painstakingly analyze performance of every business transaction and create scripts for synthetic testing in order to uncover possible issues. And this can sometimes be time consuming. Synthetic monitoring can't match the rich diversity of performance variables that exist in the real world. Because you're not monitoring actual users, you aren't really getting any data on how your product is used in real world. All you have is simply a narrow view of application performance. This is why we need real user monitoring. So how does real user monitoring work in Applications Manager? To facilitate data collection and report, re reporting, RUM's remote monitoring agent is deployed in the server where the web application is hosted. Following that, a small JavaScript snippet generated by Applications Manager is placed in the header or footer of the HTML code of the web application that you want to track. Upon loading, the JavaScript snippet acts as a code that collects the performance data and constantly transmits it to the RUM agent. The RUM agent acts as a liaison between this JavaScript code and Applications Manager's web client which basically depicts the captured data. 
So uh, what does dual user monitoring in Applications Manager help you do? It helps you analyze the front end performance across several geographies. Uh, it can also help you analyze the performance across ISPs, browsers, devices to ensure hassle-free digital experiences. It also helps you measure user satisfaction. This can be done using AppDeck scores. It helps you isolate web transactions that contribute to poor user experiences of the applications. You can also gain comprehensive insights about domain resources and user sessions. You can also identify JavaScript errors instantly to prevent users from reporting service errors. You can analyze and compare the impact of any new change made in the site and how it has affected the user experience. Now let's see how we can add a real user monitor in Applications Manager. So uh, before we add a real user monitor, you should have installed a real user monitoring agent. And I've already done that. So under web server or services, you click on a uh, real user monitor. Here, you can give the name of the monitor and the URL that you want to monitor. Let's monitor this application. Now you can provide the AppDex threshold. AppDex is basically an open standard that's used to measure the user satisfaction. Here, we will be specifying the response time in milliseconds. For example, let's give the value as 2000, which means if the response time of the URL that you've mentioned here is anywhere between the range of zero to 2000, that means the user was satisfied. If it ranges between 2000 to 8000, that is four times the specified value, it means the, you, uh, the response was tolerated by the user. If it's more than 8,000, it indicates that the user was frustrated. You can then choose the application framework type. There are two types, traditional and single page application. Traditional application is a common uh, application wherein it involves multiple web pages. Uh, an Amazon application will probably be a classic example. So every time you perform an action in a traditional application, you'll be redirected to a new page. However, in a single page application, there's just a single page, which means all the transactions that you are, that is taking place in this application are tracked by Ajax calls and are static in nature. Since we're monitoring applications manager, this is a traditional application. So let's choose traditional. You can then check these boxes if you want to track Ajax calls and cross domain Ajax calls. You can also specify domains to include. This can come in handy if you want to uh, exclude the internal traffic from your own team or your website. So here, let's just say. You can also specify user agents that you want to exclude. For example, you can choose to exclude users who are accessing this application from a specific browser like Firefox, or you can uh, restrict the access for users from uh, who are ex accessing this application from Linux, Windows, etc. So let's just say Firefox. And then you can uh, click on track resource performance. This basically helps you capture details about individual resources in the web application, and it will help you group it as first party, third party, and CDN resources. Uh, you, so affect monitor availability in ID state. Every website or web application will have a specific idle time. For example, in Applications Manager, let's say the idle time is 60 minutes. If you check this option, it means that the monitor availability will be affected when the monitor has not polled for more than 60 minutes. You can choose to uh, associate this monitor with the monitor group, uh, and you can just click on Add Monitor. So you can now see that it's been added. Let's see how it looks. Before that, like I mentioned, once you've installed the IOM agent, you'll have to uh, copy this JavaScript code in a common 
file of the application. So since I've given applications manager, this is the common file. And as you can see, I've copied this JavaScript snippet and I've replaced the agent host and port details here. So once you do that, you'll be able to see the data. This is the summary tab where you can see the architect score. And then this is the world view. So here, like you can see the response time, page views, throughput details, etc. And you can basically discover the experience, user experience across different countries. So yeah, you can see the location, average response time along with the page view. And then you can see uh, the details of how people will perceive your website when are accessed from different browsers. So from Chrome, what's the average response time? If there are other browsers, Firefox, et cetera, you'll be able to see that here. And even uh, according to device type, you'll be able to see if they access it from a mobile or if they access it from a laptop, etc. So you can even see graphs, which shows you a device memory connection type, etc. So in the web pages tab, you can see all the transactions that the user performs. So when you click on each of these transactions, you get further details. So you can get uh, split ups of response time and you can also get throughput details and you can see the AVDEX score for each of these transactions as well. Uh, you can also track user sessions. So the start time of the session along with what browser the session was in, from which device it was accessed, the country, along with the number of pages that the user navigated. Since you enabled that checkbox about resources, you can see that all of that has been sorted into three different types, first party, third party, and CDN resources. And then you have Ajax calls. You can see all the Ajax calls. And here's the JavaScript errors tab. So this can tell you uh, what kind of real-time errors that the users are facing. So when you click on the error, you'll be able to see more details. So this can help you to uh, resolve these and uh, improve the digital experience for your users. So this is the sample screenshot of uh, web transactions that take place in your uh, website. I just showed you that. So let's talk about real user monitoring use cases. So SaaS, an application service provider, can use real user monitoring to monitor and manage service quality delivered to their clients. Development teams can use it to verify if changes that are propagated to sites have the intended effect or if they cause any errors. Quality analysts can use it to test changes within a production environment. They can also use it to spot intermittent issues that can only occur under specific conditions. Site reliability engineers can use real user monitoring for constant monitoring of a website to see when and where the page load times increase to prevent timeouts caused by traffic spikes. So now that we've learned about synthetic transaction monitoring and real user monitoring, how do they complement one another? Correlating business with performance. Synthetic monitoring can provide the performance data that will enable you to pinpoint problems with page load time or network bottlenecks. However, if you want to analyze how web performance impacts business revenue, then you need more than synthetic metrics. Since real user monitoring is generated through real user traffic, it provides essential insight into real business metrics, such as conversion rates, which can then be correlated with the continuous performance metrics collected from synthetic testing. Identify problems before active users arrive. No matter where applications are hosted, problems are bound to occur. Synthetic monitoring is the most effective solution to identify a configuration problem that is probably caused by an off hours maintenance change. And it can be fixed when users uh, have not yet begun to use the application, probably in the early morning hours. On the other hand, real user monitoring would be most helpful tool to measure application responsiveness for each and every live user during the peak hours. Troubleshooting outages. Combining synthetic and RUM 
can make troubleshooting quicker and easier. When synthetic tests fail or trigger an alert, data gathered from real user monitoring will show you the real-time impact on the end user experience. Similarly, if real user monitoring data reveals a performance anomaly, then you can use synthetic monitoring to replicate the issue by exercising the same transaction across a number of ISPs and geographical locations. Collecting data in this way allows you to triangulate from various vantage points to identify the root cause that may lie in the data path between end users and your application service. So RUM and synthetic transaction monitoring can be used simultaneously to verify and deep dive into performance issues. Now let's proceed to the last topic of the day. Leverage web page analyzer to optimize web page performance. So what is a web page analyzer and why would you need it? Synthetic transaction monitoring and real user monitoring gives you insights into website performance from an end user perspective. But the web page analyzer helps you perform web page analysis. It helps you keep track of your web pages and optimize web page performance using page speed rules and suggestions. It can help you identify what exactly is slowing down your websites. PageSpeed's Insight is an online tool which can help you identify performance best practices on any given website. It provides suggestions on a web page's optimizations and suggests overall ideas on how to make the website faster. So Applications Manager's Web Page Analyzer gives you a summary of response time and domain, domains, and it gives you page speed scores and suggestions. It also helps request tracking with waterfall chart. So what is the waterfall chart? When a web page renders, it might have various components. For example, CSS file that includes styles, JavaScripts that include scripts, and you can even have images. So a web page analyzer tracks the transactions that take place when all of these components load. It gives you a visual representation of critical metrics related to each of this transaction. This can help you understand which component loads slowly. This way, you can prevent website downtime and slowness and help the website perform optimally. Now let's see how to add a web page analyzer and applications manager. So under new monitor and under web server or services, you can click on web page analyzer. So before you add a web page analyzer and monitor, you would have to install a web page analyzer add-ons. So once you do that, you will be able to uh, get data. So here you just perform uh, like uh, specify the display name of the monitor. And then you specify the URL that you want to analyze. And then you can specify the page load timer. So uh, for every website, sometimes if the website is heavy, the page might not load even after a long time. So it's essential that we specify our wait time. So otherwise the loaded part alone is taken for monitoring and analyzing. So for uh, wait after load, this basically means uh, in a web page, there might be some non-essential elements that might not load when a page first renders. So this specifies how much time we can wait for these additional elements to load. Just like URL monitor, uh, if the uh, URL that you want to analyze has any form-based authentication, you can specify these parameters. You have get and post, and then you can specify the custom HTTP header, headers. If it requires any authentication, you can specify the username and password. You can also specify domains that you want to block. And if you want content check, you can check that as well and specify the regular expression and the terms that the URL should contain or should not contain. And you can specify this uh, or check this box if you want the search to be case sensitive. And you can also enable SSL certificate monitoring. 
So you can specify the do uh, domain of the certificate, the port, and the SSL version. And if this SSL certificate requires a proxy to connect, you can check this box. And you can check this box if you want to ignore SSL certificate uh, name mismatch error. And you can check this box if you want to ignore root and intermediate certificate. And then you can specify the polling interval here. And you can choose to specify the, I mean, associate this monitor with a monitor group. You can just click on add monitor. So it's been added. Let's see how it looks. So this is the overview page. You have the web page summary, the URL, the overall page load time, along with the number of requests, the page size, and the page score. You scroll down, you can see the response time summary. Here, there's a split up of all the response time, DNS time, connection time, first byte time, etc. And then you can also see the domain summary. All the domains will be listed along with the IP address, the number of requests that each of these domains have received and the size, average response time and throughput. Like I was saying earlier, you can choose to configure alarm for each of these metrics, which means you'll get alerted when thresholds are violated. So in the network log tab, you can see the waterfall chart where you have the resources, the code that was received, the size of the resources and the content type, along with all the uh, details of response time, the start time, redirection time, etc. So from this, you can see which particular component of the uh, web page is loading very slowly. You can analyze that and optimize your web pages and help uh, in improve the user experiences. Here you have the resource details. So uh, the type of requests and the number of requests each of the types received along with its size. Here you also have screenshots and a graph of resource size percentage and resource count percentage. And here's the page speed insights tab. So uh, like I was saying, page speed insights basically helps you understand how uh, good your web page is. It gives you a score basically and uh, it helps you evaluate against a set of page rules. You can get the score for the entire page or for each of the components. The grades can vary from A to D and the score can vary from one to 100, where 100 is considered a perfect score and a score of 90 or above is considered good. And a score between 50 to 90 means it needs improvement and a score below 50 indicates that the page is poor. So for scores below 100, you'll get suggestions. As you can see, the grade is D for this particular component. So when you click on this, you can see suggestions as to how you can improve it. So this is how a web page analyzer looks. So this is a sample screenshot of the page speed insights uh, So uh, before we look at the recap of today's session, uh, I would request you to please take a few minutes to answer the poll that might appear on your screen. So here's a quick recap. Today we understood how we can monitor individual URLs for better user experiences using the URL monitor. And then we saw how we can analyze the issues uh, that are faced in critical workflows by using synthetic transaction monitoring. And we also saw how it can help us go beyond the app only view. And then we talked about real user monitoring where we understood how we can monitor real time user experiences. And finally, we saw how we can optimize web pages using the web page analyzer. So thank you for joining and have a great day.